one of the hardest conversations that a mother can have with their son, especially if you're like a single mother, especially if you're a single black mother. Okay, I know they say it's not a race thing. Oh, but the races get treated differently, don't we? Is their behavior of their father towards them, especially when they reach in a certain age. I believe when they're younger, they may ask, you know, if they remember the person. Oh, what happened to such and such? You know, it's okay. Okay, thanks, mommy. And they kind of run off and you can kind of overcompensate which I have done that with extra attention, extra love, and I'm gonna buy you extra things, and uh, I got him a bouncy house thing, and just put it in our yard with, with a, uh, we rented the whole thing, it was like a carnival thing, like a big birthday party, and you're the best, right? I'm gonna earn your clothes, and you know, overcompensate, and it's not just taking care of them, you wanna make sure that they're padded from the other presence not being, or just choosing not to be there. In the meantime, you have to, kind of go on with your life too because it's what it is right so you close that door to that you know if you're real good you probably did get some therapy um but in the, in the meantime in between time you still got to live life right so we did the therapy thing we then moved on taking care of the kids there comes to a certain age that your children or your son is going to reach where they want to start asking questions about their dad and i've been telling them stuff the whole time just good stories, you know, stuff that I know. I will even try to incorporate it into their life. I'm trying to incorporate a missing presence. I'm trying to incorporate a phantom of the opera's presence, right? Well, I still try to be respectful so it won't taint my children's view of that phantom of the opera, right? And then you can't confide in anyone because if you have people that might be jealous of you in the family unit or are you... I'm sorry, this dog is using a bathroom and she still ain't nothing coming out, girl. Hold on, y'all. Of this Phantom of the Opera type of uh, presence, you can't really confide. Well, I can't, but the majority of us, you think you can, but you can't. You can't really confide in people around you because a lot of them like to see that happen. And so you thought she was cute and, oh, you can't keep a man. And it has nothing to do with that. If you're not with the person, you should be taking care of your goddamn kids, right? Well, ain't nobody tell you to have them. That's how people talk to you, even in the church section. You say, well, go over there. No, I didn't have them say that, too. Okay. They said, well, you shouldn't have. Well, what about y'all put y'all take the man off the hook? And I've even had it in my instance. They not only took the man off the hook, they supported that man in a false narrative for almost 10 years and laughed at me trying to do the best that I could do by the grace of God. Thank God. Right? I'm not no victim. I'm just telling you the story. And laughed at me. So this is, this is not just a runaway baby daddy. This is a whole nother different deep situation, right? And he will continuously keep trying to poke at the same fucking narrative and the same story to trigger you over and over and over again. Talk about being fucking sick, right? A sick fucking society. So, fuck those people, right? But you have to deal with, of course, your child. So, through Christmases, through birthdays, you know, through Thanksgiving, through the holidays, through different just epiphanies that I may have or different, you know, things that may happen. I'll try to incorporate pleasant stories of their father, not only to my son, but to my daughters as well. I'll incorporate those stories just to kind of, just to try to keep it well-rounded, right? And it'd be beautiful. That was, that sufficed for a while. But again, it's going to come a certain time where yo, stop it, girl, stop it, girl, where yo son so get old enough towards their teen years, towards 12 years old, 13, maybe even before that. Where are they going to come and keep asking you, what is going on with my father? Right? So the pleasant stories that I told sufficed. He want to know, you know, he's older now. They, you know, with, with age should come more awareness. It's not the taint of aversion, but they need to know more. Right? Like we do when we get older. You know more. When you're younger, you're running around, you're unaware. Ignorance is bliss. You don't know that that water costs money, right? Until you become aware of it. Especially when you start having to pay for it. So, I sit down and have some hard conversations with him and tell him, well, this is how it went. And, you know, just accept the person. Everybody has flaws, right? So, I have to even, in this time, I have to therapeutically have a conversation with my son towards a person that has butchered my name to motherfucking death. That would love to see me bludgeon the motherfucking death. And then that walked out and kind of abandoned your 
role in your own children's life while parading your role in other motherfucking kids' life. That wasn't half the mother that I have committed myself to motherfucking being, and that's on facts. But because I love my son, I'm going to do that for him. You have to almost, it's like exonerating a fucking criminal for what they have done because you love your child so much. If you don't do this, right, because we can go the other way, right? You don't do this and say, you know what, fuck this. Sorry, son, I can't tell you. You got to reach out, which is what happened to his father. Mama didn't want to be bothered with it. It's like opening up a door. I don't want, I don't want to talk about that, right? So I forced myself to talk about good stories and things that I know so my son can have a sense of relation. And my daughter says, well, you said my dad like this? Oh, uh, yeah. You said my dad grew up with watermelons on his land? Yeah, he grew up with watermelons. And, uh, son. That's how about we grow some watermelons, which we're growing some motherfucking watermelons, right? So they can feel a sense of connection. You can go the other way where... You could just say, fuck it. You're just going to have to see him when you're 18 or 16 or whatever. Reach out to him yourself. I'm not doing nothing. But the problem lies in that. Because I've seen it happen with my father. So, see, I'm thankful for the examples of masculinity I had around me. No matter how broken, no matter how hurting, no matter how, you know, flawed. Everybody flawed. They just let it hang out, right? My grandmother, I love her. But she took that standpoint with my dad. And what it ended up doing is, why does this lady keep girl gone i'm sorry y'all these these people be driving weird around here she didn't drove back about three four times gone gone on now okay all right my grandmother did that with my dad okay my dad had a lot of promise and potential tons of it tons of things this man this man is multi was multifaceted uh excuse me because he passed away recently and it seemed like it just kind of stayed locked up inside of him because it was always that one question that was lingering, and I believe that fucked with his identity and self-worth tremendously. Did he still go on to do great things? Yes. Was he still, you know, in some of his gifts? Yes. But there was always something there that you could see even as he passed away. It never came quite right. Um, and I'm not saying, oh, you got to reconnect with your father in order for you to be a real man. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about as the process of as a mother, when your son comes of age and you're in this situation. May, I hope that you never are in this situation. It's one of the most hurtful, gut-wrenching. It is like, it'll just turn your stomach situations. Because the confusion and then the, to know someone that you are, that you love their children so much is so cruel and fucked up towards you. And mine, on top of that, to have people support a cruel, fucked up motherfucker, happily dedicated to the shit, it's just like astounding, right? It's shocking, the disgust, the motherfucking audacity. If you do not do this, let's take my father. My grandmother said, "Fuck it, you have to meet him when you get older." He did. But I noticed even when I was when I when I came about, my father would take me over to my grandfather's house. My grandfather was so nice to me and so kind. And I used to always wonder, because I was a very aware child. I used to always wonder, like, why is my dad just sitting over there? Just standing over there just looking. He would be looking out the side of his eye. And I now that I'm a grown person, I could see, oh, the affection he was showing me. My father never received that growing up. So it's like you showing it to my kids, but and my grandfather would try to compensate. Sometimes they, you know, people do change and they grow, get older, and you know. And he would try to laugh a joke with my dad. My, that's where my dad get a sense of humor from. Because my dad is funny. That's where I do my comedy and shit from. You know. Go on here to go, man. This, this is the same car. Look. I just had to show it to you real quick. Like, it's the same car grew up with you. Okay, so anyway. That's where he got, where he got a sense of humor from. And, um... My father would kind of always be standoffish with them. Look, and it's turning around again. I'm going to show y'all on the back end of it. It's turning around like, what's wrong, dog? Like, you don't know where you're going? That's what I be trying to tell y'all. I'm, I'm going to start taping it so you can see. Like, she appeared. No, I'm not. So anyways. It affected my father. And he, I believe he always had a deep resentment for my grandmother. Because back in those days, if the man didn't want to be bothered with you, you had to kind of go back out there and 
basically get on your good foot. You know what I'm saying? Get on your good foot, honey, and get on out there and, you know, fix yourself up and, you know what I mean? And get you a man, right? And that's what my grandmother did. And a lot of times while they was doing that, they would send their kids to go stay with their parents, which is what happened to my dad or they folks, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they other people so that's probably married, a cousin or auntie or sisters, one of them that's, or a brother that's married, because that was looked as more proper until they got themselves married. And that's the same thing that happened to my kid's dad. They got something in common. See, you do, you do it attracted to the first you know role models that you had in your life which is your parents whoever raised you okay so that's what they had in common both their mothers kind of threw them away uh they went to go you gonna stay with your folks my grandparents my your grandparents and i'm gonna go out here and have a good time now in the meantime you know they went on and had a good time and had another life and, and developing that these boys was left without the mother and the father and now they older now, they got to pick somebody to do this cycle over with. You don't have to, but the majority of the time they're going to. And for whatever reason, you wanted to choose me. This man got six baby mamas, nine kids. He ain't did this with none of them. So a lot of you be like, well, the problem is you. That's, that's, how, the, that's how the enemy works. They'll set up a lie and look like, look at me. I'm such a good dad. Look at these four children that I'm taking care of. I'm avoiding those three with a lie. And... I didn't want to tell my son that, but I went on and had to show him not to make him, oh, you're going to look at your father. I just told him that's why I want to make sure that you mentally whole and you're on top of your stuff and explain to me how you feel. Because if you don't, you'll end up turning into my father who's emotionally distant and really couldn't feel like, really couldn't feel like he could tell you how he felt. Okay. And really didn't feel comfortable in his own skin due to, and he, uh, he had reason for my grandmother. He never called her mom. He always called her, you know, uh, by her name all this i never heard him call her ma never sometimes when he would play he would say like watch this ma and then she'll look and be you know to the point where she started accepting and i guess she felt like she deserved that because what she had you know went on to live her life and came back and got her kid and so then she couldn't produce his father you know and then he wanted to reach out to him she wasn't he wanted to now that's that's, that's what i wanted to get to my father one he did want to reach out to him um, when him and my mom were teens and my grandmother just so it kind of made him mad like well forget it I don't need that man anyway but he really wanted to the little boy in him wanted to so now I have my son that's almost as tall as I am almost way the same amount I weigh okay <laughs> all right big grown man big up feet bigger than mine and he now he's saying mom can you please reach out to my dad so I did it okay and he said, keep sending pictures of me. And that's where we at. So if I would have said no, he would have resentments. Oh my goodness, look at that. I'm sorry, y'all. Look at this nasty uh, caterpillar. You see that? Look at that. What is, oh, what is that? I'm sorry, that caught my, you know, I like to be out here with my little plants. You see what I'm saying? My little, you see my little plants around. See that? So, anyways, I just wanted to talk about that. I gotta take my little baby hair slick now. It's just a tough conversation. You know, seek out, seek support if you need it. May, may you never know what that betrayal and that irritation feels like. I hope you never know it. Even though lots of people wanted me to know it. Over and over and over again. Continuously. Forever. Okay? Stay away from people like that. You have to deal with them. I would say get all of your feelings and toxicity out now. Because you have toxicity just like I do about situations that you may have dealt with on the surface and really just kind of a little bit, but you ain't dabbed deep into them. You know, your kids will make you dab deep into stuff. And as that's happening, forgive yourself, forgive them, give them over to what they're for. And if you have to deal with them, deal with them accordingly. Just yes, no answers. Just, okay, y'all have a good time. Because your kids will resent you. I guarantee you that. This is spoken from a woman. Where my, my dad and my, my stepdad got along. They were really, really close. Like, i never seen people just, like, not want to raise their kids because they're not with the person. So, this was new for me, okay? All right. You'd be surprised. And something that's painful and new to you will be exciting and happy for other people to see you go through. And they will support that person, too. And support them in their lives, which is very strange. So... You know, y'all keep me in your prayers. Um, 
I know I normally don't reveal stuff like this. But just, you know, a sister is a human being. No matter how much they keep trying to tell I'm some type of motherfucking supernova. I'm a mother. And if you have kids, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's just trifling. And I can't. I can express it to a certain degree to show my humanity to my kids, but I can't taint their image of their dad. And it's unfair because the motherfucker didn't care about what type of image they had of me. So it's like you almost have to have sympathy for a nigga that didn't, that didn't had none for you. And the only reason you have to show sympathy is because of the children. Talk about a hard task. It's not easy at all. It'd be much easier to stay bitter and say, fuck it. See that motherfucker when you're 18. But I don't want my son to resent me. Like I see my father, even though he loved my grandmother, he had a little resentment towards her. Because she coddled him too. And she coddled him and held him so much he didn't grow in certain areas. And I want my son, and not only my son, but my daughter, but this is, my son is really pressing it because he's older. I want my son to grow. I want him to have a clear view of himself, and I want him to know of his father, and if not, know him. And not only know his good parts, he has to know his bad parts because that's what life is about. So, this is uh, self denial, right? At his uh, height, at his, at his height, where you have to deny yourself to say, fuck that nigga, for the sake of your children. Okay, so, and then family members and stuff supported this nigga not taking care of our kids. That's crazy. Like, it's beyond insane. And then to have people be so unempathetic, especially them stupid ass church people. They're so unempathetic and fucked up and disgusting, right? And you like you listen to the church in the background. I am, but not them, not with them church people. Okay, let me pause there. Well, I don't like this lady right here. Sometimes I don't like I don't like that one. Let me change it. So he'll thank me when he grown. And when he get older, the reward will be him not doing that to his kids. And if he does, I'm not gonna be one of them dumbass mamas like this nigga's mama is to go along with their stupidity and act like it didn't happen. You didn't have three kids, now they're here, now they're not. Like I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so my older version of myself, my grandkids, and my son's future spouse is going to thank me. And sometimes you have to look at it like that. We're not doing it for now. We're doing it for then. Right? All right. So thank you for the positive vibes and positive energy. I do not re receive any of your negative energy. If you're gloating or you think something like this is cute or funny or you know, within your, your delusional jealousy or, or, or envy or a psychotic, you know, weird identity crisis that you try to project off onto me. I don't receive any of your energy. I have no problem being vulnerable. And I have no problem with showing parts of myself that's particularly ugly, not perfect, and to be quite frank, fucked up. And it was that fucked up areas that a lot of you fucking supported. Just to keep it like that. So, you know, it's a lot to deal with. I'm grateful for another day. I'm thankful to the most high. And you know what? Pain teaches you. And that's why when you meet someone else that has, you, you don't even know the, the half of that's been through tremendous pain. And you question their motives and question them to how why they're nice to you. Motherfucker, it's hard to be nice to people after this shit didn't happen to you. If I'm nice to you, I motherfucking mean it. Okay? I'm just saying. It's not like I'm, oh, please, huh? No, if I was desperate, I would have chased after these motherfuckers that did this to me. Because I had actual relationships with them. Why would I do that with a new strangers that I don't know? It's just like trying to start over. Like, well, okay, them motherfuckers was fucked up. Like, that was a bad batch. Don't let it change who you are. Let it, let it, let it give you wisdom, right? But it shouldn't change who you are. And so this is one of those areas where you briefly dealt with something. You have to deal with it deeper. And you could thank God that it's a hard test, but it's something that you just have to do. And hopefully it's a cautionary tale to others. Well, it really can't be a cautionary tale because you really don't know a lot of times how these men are going to act. People say, well, you chose them. Well, I did. I didn't know. I, 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 you see them with the other kids. I didn't think that they was going to be triggered by me and do that. 
Like, you're forever a victim. I'm not a victim, but it's obviously something wrong with these niggas that nobody's holding them accountable for to the point where you guys are supporting these motherfuckers without vetting them. But you feel like you have to vet me and I'm the motherfuckers happening to. So I'm really fucked up with that thought process, don't you think? Ah, <sighs> well, happy Wednesday, happy hump day. All right? So that's something that we're dealing with for the kids. It's disgusting. And any father, I don't give a fuck if you, I'm a good dad. If any father that has supported a nigga doing this to their own kids, you fucked up as well. I don't give a fuck how nice you act like you towards your children. Do you see me interacting and trying to affect another woman's motherhood? That's none of my business. I'm like, sister, I hope that you make it because this shit is hard. For you to be like happy, like, see, I'm taking care of my kids. And you supported a nigga that's not taking care of his. You fucked up as well. Just know that. Okay? Because you have these twisted psychos that are trying to act like, well, look at this. Don't you want this, bitch? I don't have kids with you. No, I don't. And look at how, what you're supporting. Definitely fucking not. Okay? So I just wanted to show you guys and talk to you guys about that. There's comes a time where you're going to have to put some things aside. Like, you know, like we always do like mothers. And um, go into the hard places. Because if you don't, your sons, especially your sons, and your daughters too. Come, we'll talk about that in the new, next few years, okay? But your sons will resent you, okay? So be honest with yourself. Seek help. And keep moving forward. Because God is still good, even when people are fucking nuts.